Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is second video in the STM32 timer series, and today we will see, how to use the PWM input mode. I covered the PWM output in my previous video about the timers, and that's why I decided to go with the PWM input today. We will see how to measure the input frequency, and the duty cycle, using the PWM input mode. So let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE. I am using STM32F446RE. Give some name to the project, and click finish. So first of all, I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. Let's see the clock configuration. Type in the crystal frequency of your controller. Choose this as per your board, don't just use what I am using. My board have 8 MHz crystal. Choose the HSE for external crystal. Choose PCLK for PLL clock. Type the frequency you want to run the controller at, and hit enter. That's all about the clock configuration. Now let's configure the timer. I am choosing timer 1 to provide the PWM signal. PWM output has already been covered, and you can watch the video on the top right corner. Timer 1 is connected to APB2 clock, which is running at 180 MHz. I am choosing the auto reload period of 1800, so the output frequency will be 100 kHz. This is it for the timer 1. Now timer 2 is going to be used for the PWM input. Choose the clock source as internal clock, and choose the combined channels as PWM input. Timer 2 channel 1 will be our main channel, where we will provide the input clock. You can see here the pin PA0 got selected. Now comes the parameters. Here I am keeping the prescaler 0, so the timer clock will be same as APB1, and that is, 90 MHz. The auto reload is set to maximum value. This is a 32-bit register, and that's why this value is very high. If you have 16-bit register, this will be 65535, so leave it to default. Next is the internal clock division. To understand this, we need to check the reference manual. Here in the control register 1, we have the clock division. This clock division basically sets up the dead time and sampling clock. The DTS clock decides, how fast we want to sample the input signal. Here are the settings for the DTS clock. I am keeping it to no division, and that means the DTS clock will be same as the internal clock. We can skip the rest, and come to the channel configuration. Here the input trigger is TI1FP1, which means that the input from channel 1, after the filter and polarity selection, will be connected to the capture 1. Next we have is the parameters for channel 1. The polarity is set to rising edge, which means that this channel is going to measure the rising edges of the signal. IC selection is direct, and we will connect the input signal directly to this channel. This channel is our main channel, and it will measure the frequency. Now for the prescalar division ratio, let's see the reference manual again. Here we are interested in the capture compare register. We have the input capture prescalar, and as you can see, it basically controls the capture frequency. These bits controls how often we want to do the capture. Let me explain this in detail. Let's assume that this is the input clock, and we want to capture the rising edges. 
a rising edge would be counted as an event. Now suppose we use the prescalar division 8, that would mean that interrupt will trigger after the 8 events, and that means here. This will keep happening after every 8 events. Remember that, if we do the captures at very high frequency, then the interrupts will trigger very often, and this will leave the rest of the code useless. So this is an important parameters. I am going with the highest possible value, and that means, the capture will be done once every 8 events. But the issue is, that the cube MX is not letting me choose this one. Don't worry about this, we can set it in the code itself. Next comes the filter. I am not going to use it, but let me explain it anyway. Here we have the input capture filter. The filter configures the frequency, at which the input signal will be sampled. It is also used as low pass filter, but I couldn't find more information on the topic. For now we will keep the filter zero, and that means the sampling frequency will be DTS, and that is the internal clock. I will update you if I find more information on how to use these filters. Now comes the parameters for channel 2. The polarity should be opposite to the first channel, and that's why it's falling edge. The IC selection is indirect, and this means we don't need to give the input to this channel. It's internally connected to the channel 1, and it is used to calculate the duty cycle. Alright let's enable the interrupt for the timer 2. This is it for the setup, click save to generate the code now. Let's create few variables, where we can store the results. Now in the main function, start the timer in input capture mode for channel 1. Channel 2 can be used in the normal mode, since we only need the interrupt from channel 1. After the input capture has been started, we will start the PWM for timer 1. And finally set the value of capture compare register for the duty cycle. Everything related to PWM output has been covered in the previous video. So if you don't understand PWM output, please watch the video on the top right corner. Once the input capture actually does the capture, an interrupt will be triggered, and this input capture callback will be called. Now we will write the rest of the code inside this callback function. Here we will check if the interrupt was triggered by the channel 1, that is, due to the rising edge of the input signal. If it is, then we will read the input capture value for the channel 1. Then we will read the capture value for the channel 2, and use it to calculate the duty cycle. I will explain this in a minute. Next, calculate the frequency. This 90 MHz is my timer 2 clock. Now let's understand this calculation. Let's see the PWM input mode in the reference manual. Well we are mainly interested in this figure. Here you can see, when the first rising edge is captured, the counter is reset, and so do the captures values. When the second rising edge gets captures, the capture value read. This value is actually this time difference between the first and second edges. So, the period of the signal. In the callback, we also read the capture value for the falling edge. Using that value, 
we can determine the pulse high time, as a percentage of the total time. This will be the duty cycle for the signal. Similarly, using the clock frequency, we can determine the frequency of the input signal. I am just giving this delay in the while loop, to test if the control enters the loop or not. Alright, let's test this. I have added all three variables to the live expression. Okay, you can see the frequency is around 100 kHz, and the duty is around 50%. Also note that the input capture value is pretty consistent. Let's put a breakpoint in the while loop to check if the control enters the loop. So the loop is also working alright. Since it's working fine for now, let's test the higher frequencies. Now the auto reload is 450, making the output frequency 400 kHz. And let's change the capture compare to 225, making the duty cycle 50%. And there we have it. Around 400 kHz frequency, and 50% duty cycle. But, the while loop isn't running anymore. This is because the interrupts are getting triggered at very high rate, making the rest of the code impossible to run. This is where the input capture prescaler comes in. Right now it's set to division 1, but we will change it to highest. And this will make the capture to be performed every 8 events. Let's test this. And now you can see, the while loop is running pretty well. Let's see how higher can we measure with this setup. This time the auto reload is 180, making the frequency equal to 1 MHz. Let's change the capture compare to 60, so the duty cycle will be 33%. I would say the result is approximately correct. The frequency is around 1 MHz, and the duty is 31%. The while loop is still running, so we can test even higher range. Now the frequency will be 2 MHz, and the capture compare is still 60, making the duty cycle equal to 66%. This is still working alright. Surprisingly, the while loop is still running. Honestly I wasn't expecting it, but let's go even higher. Now the auto reload is 60, making the frequency equal to 3 MHz, and I am keeping the auto reload at 30, so the duty would be 50%. Here we do have approximate to what we need, but the while loop is not running anymore. I guess this is the limit for the while loop, with the current setup. Even though it was able to measure the 2 MHz clocks, I would suggest that you keep the measurement below 1 MHz. For those frequencies, the rest of the code can run pretty well too. If you want to measure high frequencies, well then you won't be able to run the rest of the code. You can play with some other settings to improve the accuracy of the frequency measure. 
Before finishing this video, I want to share one more thing. It's quite possible to measure the high frequencies also. In fact I did some tests, and you can see the result in the picture. The accuracy even at 10 MHz frequency is quite phenomenal. This is a different method by the way. I was able to measure up to 18 MHz input frequencies, and even then the while loop was still able to run. I was going to make the video on that method, but as I was about to start, I saw the Cube MX has deprecated some settings that are needed for it. Anyway, I will post the video on that method soon, and if the Cube MX allows you to do the setup, you can use it. This is it for the today's video. I hope you understood the process, and its explanation. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.